Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be doing the build of the Tomo Quads Chopstick Quad and it's also known as the CS110. Here's a little diagram of what the build should look like. And here's a look at the frame. Let's see, it goes this way, the front is this way. And it's going to be pretty similar to the way the Predator is built, uh, except the camera is going to be in the front here and it's going to be a little bit longer. Uh, in the center section uh, instead of the camera being up on top like on the Predator X. You got the same style of arm here uh, with the uh, 3D printed uh, motor protector. Uh, the skinny arm here and it's also the same 3 millimeters thickness for, for durability and strength and crashes. Here's a look at the top plate and the camera goes here with the antenna sticking out of this little hole there and I think the uh, um, receiver and turning goes out the back as well. You get the same uh, TPU printed uh, little motor mount, or not motor mounts, uh, this is the mount for the ESCs and the flight controller. And I'll be using the same 10 amp 4 in 1 ESC, it's BLLES. But in this build, I'm going to be using a different flight controller. This is the um, this is not the Pico BLX, this is the um, Betaflight with the OSD uh, microboard with the OSD chip here, 20 by 20 mounting pattern. Similar to the Pico BLX, but um, this one will let you have the on onboard uh, OSD and um, you can configure it in the Betaflight configurator. And I'll go over that a little bit later. You got a bunch of uh, nylon standoffs and screws for putting this together. You get a couple of extra 3D printed parts here, so camera mount, and this goes into the back, and I think this uh, lets you put your antennas up through this little part here. The motors I'll be using are the DYS. These are the 1104-7000 KV motors, and I'll be using the same uh, Rotorx 2535 propellers. So I'm gonna get started and go ahead and mount the ESCs and wire up the flight controller. This is, uh, again, with these 4 one ESCs, the builds are going to be pretty easy. Just mount the ESC, and mount the motors, and solder the motor wires to the little tabs here on the side, and you're done with the motors and ESCs. That's pretty easy. So I'll do that, and we'll be right back. Okay, guys, so I'm here, here at the point where I've got my ESCs mounted. And I've got uh, this rubber bands going around the uh, bottom here. It's gonna hold on my battery. Um, got the little TPU mount in here, and my my uh, JST connector soldered in with a little uh, lead that's gonna go to my flight controller. And I'm gonna change my flight controller. I was gonna do this Betaflight OSD microboard, but uh, the holes on here are too small. For these standoffs, so I have to go with the uh, Pico BLX board. I'm not sure what size hole this is on here, but they don't fit um, the screws that are included in this kit, so I can't use this board. I'll do a review on this board later, so look for a video on this. I'll, I'll use this on a different frame where I can uh, have some different mounting options. I'm a little bit restricted because of the design. Uh, these four standoffs are part of the structural uh, support for the top plate so I have to use a uh, flight controller that will go uh, with this design. So I'm just going to use the Pico BLX going to uh, solder on my power leads to the bottom of the board here and I got the ESC signal wires here uh, going to the appropriate locations uh, for each motor and uh, you got uh, basically the it's just like the Predator X the the numbers of the ESCs don't necessarily correspond to the numbers of the motors. I think three and four are swapped. So uh, on the on the leads that come out of the ESC. So I have uh, motors one, two, three, and four is actually leads one, two, four, and three, which is not the uh, layout in Betaflight. Just letting you know. So these are the colors and the way I'm going to be soldering on two and uh, four over here and one and three over here and I'll go ahead and I'll solder this on and I'll be right back 
Okay guys, so I got the Pico BLX flight controller mounted. I got my uh, four ESC signal wires here. You can see the colors uh, green for motor one, yellow for motor two, orange for motor three, and blue for motor four. If you got these same parts, and then the color should be the same. And we got my uh, power lead going into the board here. Uh, at this point, just got to put the camera mount on. Uh, put on the pigtails for the receiver and the camera. Uh, mount the camera, mount the top plate, and uh, actually kind of mount the motors as well and solder them onto the ESC pads, but that's actually a really simple thing. So I'll just come back and do all that and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so here it is pretty much all done. I just have to put the props on. Uh, I got my motors mounted and I've used a little bit of tape here electrical tape to hold the wires down and have them soldered onto all the points here on the 4-in-1 ESC. I've got my FlySky micro receiver installed here between the top plate and the Pico BLX it's sitting right there. I have a, this is a uh, VM275T micro camera uh, all-in-one 25 milliwatts. I think I took this off of one of my tiny whoops. This um, Frame design is actually designed for a uh, TX02 where the antenna comes up the middle, which is why the hole's over here. That's why the antenna is kind of bent over a little bit because the antenna is actually off to the side on this particular model. The camera mount is actually screwed in on the bottom here and it goes through the bottom plate into the 3D printed part. And I actually used a little bit of uh, double-sided foam tape. I don't know if you can see that right there, the little black right there and there, just to give it a little bit of extra stickiness because there's only one screw there, so it may have a tendency to to twist. So I put a little bit of sticky foam there to hold it in place. And I actually moved the camera mount up forward a little bit in front of the carbon plate there just because uh, there's not much room here and I've got quite a bit of camera tilt. I got a little bit of sticky foam on the bottom there uh, to hold the video transmitter part in and a little bit of sticky foam on the bottom of the barrel of the camera and also a rubber band here to secure the camera so it doesn't move around. Now the top plate secures uh, via these screws that go all the way through the stack, the uh, ESCs and the flight controller. And I just cut off the excess here. I was not able to get these nuts on over here because uh, these little antenna holes are blocking uh, the nut from being screwed on. So I just left it alone. This is mainly cosmetic anyway. It doesn't really support, serve, serve any purpose for me because I don't have uh, one of those spectrum uh, receivers where they have, or free sky receivers where there's dual diversity antennas. I just have my free sky or my fly sky antenna just going down and through the uh, bottom of the plate here and out the back. And usually on my on my builds, these are just fine. I never have any problems with that. So um, I have a nut over here to hold that one piece in. Should be okay. So here in the back, I've got a zip tie holding the uh, battery lead to the frame and you want to do this in case you have a crash and uh, you don't want this lead getting tugged on and pulling off of the ESC here. Then uh, those, those little solder pads come off then the ESC is useless so I definitely want to zip tie this here and on the bottom instead of the velcro strap going through these um, slots here I just have these rubber bands going to the standoff wraps around here and then to the other side. So I got two rubber bands here as well as some foam. This is from one of those cameras, all in one cameras. So I have a little layer of foam here just cut and I'm using the uh, 300 milliamp hour nanotech battery. And this is about 17 grams, it's pretty light and it's a 45 to 90 discharge, so it sits on like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put the props on and then I'll give you a final weight measurement. 
Okay, I got the props on, and this is with the battery, the 300 milliamp hour battery that I'm normally going to fly with. So this is going to be all up weight. So it's about a little over 79 grams for this guy. And the, I think it's a lot lighter than the Predator X because I think this was, let me jump, double check this. This is the Predator X. This is 71 and a half grams without the battery. So you add 17 grams. So it's almost 88, 89 grams. Um, so almost, this the Predator X is almost 10 grams heavier. So this will be interesting to see how fast this is. Yeah. I think, uh, let's see, the, the whip antenna versus this uh, heavy circular polarized antenna might be one difference. And I also have this um, heavier gauge uh, wire back here for this here. And you got a buzzer back here with some extra plastic. Uh, just a few things that might be the difference in the weight. These are 1105 motors, but they're only 5,000 kV, so these are probably a little bit heavier than these 1104 motors that are 7,000 kV. So these will spin faster, a little bit lower, um, low end torque. So the flight characteristics will probably be a little bit different, but it is lighter on the same battery, so we'll have to see how fast this is compared to the Predator X. Uh, obviously, you can see that the, uh, in terms of the, uh, it's a structure of the frame. It's, they're both uh, 110 millimeter X style frames. They're 80 millimeters front to back and side to side. So it's both square. It's just that the main difference between the, the chopstick and the Predator X is that the Predator X can take up to a three inch propeller because of the design where the camera is on, pod is on top versus in front. Whereas on this guy, the max prop is going to be two and a half inches no matter what because uh, the way the frame is designed. So I'm not going to uh, go over the beta flight flash on this because it's exactly the same as what's on the Predator X. So I put a card up here in the corner to the Predator X video and you can uh, find that uh, beta flight flash and config in that video. It's exactly the same. I, in fact, I just copied the pins and everything that's on here because the frames are so similar. So. Um, and then later on, as I tune this, I will update this video with a CLI dump that's uh, going to have some uh, PIDs that are a little bit more tuned for this frame. Should, should, shouldn't be that much different, though. So look for that in the future. Anyway, guys, I'll go ahead and I'll roll a little bit of flight footage here for you. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video.